Well, uh, the urban beaver situation statewide is, is just, uh, it's our number one nuisance animal, and it has been for the last four or five years. Rather than deer and geese? Rather than deer and geese. We get, we get more calls, uh, more complaints, and much more damage from beaver than any other animal. These are the two culverts. If they're going up into the, into the subdivision again, there's two big culverts down here that they're accessing. You got some more damage somewhere else? Or? Yeah, there's some more damage down this is at least the fourth time, maybe the fifth time that I know of that they've showed up again. You know, we've done things to get them taken care of temporarily, but uh, somehow they come and find it again. You've even had uh, some residents who have said the beaver have been so bold that they come right up on their patio. <laughs> that's true, that's happened. I'm going to explore some more and see if I can find pinpoint where he's at. Um, and this is a particular area where it really shows how beavers are becoming uh, more adaptable to urban life. They're actually going up into the storm drains and living there. Mm. Um, we have the Little Blue River is right behind us here, and that is like I-70 for the beaver. You know, the this, was a, this was a cottonwood. But they're professionals, and they come in, and they show us exactly what to do, and if necessary, do it themselves. And They've been a great help to us. Are some of the residents worried about the uh, safety issue of, uh, of these wild animals sort of in the neighborhood? Is that part of the, the problem well, too? I think they are. I don't think there's anybody worried about being attacked by a beaver, but when you have an area like that that attracts a lot of wild animals, there are some snakes over there and some other creatures that some of the people are a little bit nervous about.